Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be making this outdoor wooden cooler. I'm gonna give you every step that you need, all the details that you need to make one of your own, customize it your own way. It's water resistant, made to be outside, super, super insulated, and ooh, does it have the good drinks. Hmm? <laughs> you said the drinks were in the cooler. So our very first step and also very important step in making a wooden cooler would be to have the wood cut for said wooden cooler. So step one, cut some wood. So here's some legs that I built off camera. These are already finished, of course. Um, the long pieces, which are 34 inches, is what we just got through cutting. Now we need to cut the, the cross supports here, which are 16 inches for the cooler that I'm using. If you're using a different cooler, it's very easy to adjust. Make the boards a little longer, make the boards a little shorter. Easy math. However you choose to assemble your legs is your decision. But the way that I do it is so that one half of this leg is narrower by the thickness of the board. That way, so when we measure it this way, it's three and a half inches. And when we measure it this way, it's three and a half inches. I just think that it looks better. You don't have to do this step. You could leave this one the full three and a half inch width. This side would just be a little longer, not a big deal, but it drives my OCD crazy. So that's why I change it. Okay, moving right along. The next step, we're going to start assembling the legs. And the only thing to remember that's important here, if we cut one of these narrower than the other one, you just wanna be sure when you assemble it, that you put the narrower one on top of the wider one. That way that it measures correctly. Otherwise you did all that work for nothing. And we don't do work for nothing around here because that's a waste of time. The way I like doing this is, this is gonna live outside. I am using type on three. I'm sure that's probably enough, but I still like to use the pocket holes just to for a physical fastener to hold it in place because it makes me feel better. And I use the outdoor coated Craig screws because outdoors. All right, repeat that three more times without wasting as much glue and we're ready for the next step. All right, the leg pieces are glued up, glue's dry, pocket holes in, check. Time to put these cross pieces, which are 16 inches for my instance, into these leg assemblies. Two for each one, a little bit of glue, a couple of screws, those will be done. This is gonna go underneath here and it's what supports our cooler. So if this thing's full of ice and water and soda and snacks and you know stuff, it can get a little heavy. So we want to be sure that one, these boards, whatever you choose to use is stout enough that it's gonna be able to hold a cooler. And instead of just the little screws that I use on the side, uh, I'm using two inch screws. Now, one thing we do want to make sure is one side or the other, whichever one we choose, we gotta have room to come about six inches back to be able to put our drain in the bottom of the cooler. So we don't want these supports to be in the way of that. So I like to put mine just a few inches apart in the middle, and it's more than sufficient when that cooler sets down on there to hold all that weight. This is a finished cooler with the lid removed for safety. I'm gonna bring you in close here so I can show you on the details on building this top rim around here. So the black does make it a little harder to see, but 
The piece that we need to build now is this top cap that goes on here that one, we cut the custom hole for the cooler and two kind of gives us our lip around the edge here that makes it look a lot more finished. I will give you the measurements that I use for the box size that I'm doing, but you could easily adjust the length and width of these, especially the width of the boards. If you wanted your cap to be wider, like if you wanted to set drinks on here or whatever, you could easily do that. I have not done it in the past because it tends, when it sits outside the boards, if they cup a little bit, it starts to look wonky. If it's got little freaking wings sticking up on the side, which I'm not super excited about that look. So I of course already know the size of the boards that I need for my front and back and sides of this top cap. So we're gonna get those cut up. I'm gonna show you how to assemble them and I'm gonna show you some of the details and things that you might wanna change if you want your cap to be wider, smaller, bigger. We're gonna put pocket holes, drill them into these side pieces. You don't wanna put the holes too far in because when we cut for our cooler, you don't wanna to have to cut and have that screw in the way. So what I do is typically put one about maybe a little over half and then one on the outside. You can of course go as fancy as you want on this. You could do like a half flap bridle joint thing. That would probably be super strong. Then there wouldn't be any screws in the way. That would probably be better, but for time's sake, I typically do it this way, and it's plenty strong enough for what we do. The time has come. We need to cut out the space for the cooler, which is arguably one of the more tricky parts to this, but it's not too bad. All we need is our cooler with the lid taken off of it. You just carefully place said cooler centered on this frame about the best that you can, and then we can run, hold your pencil against the cooler as close as you want it to be and draw a line around the edge. It's easy as that. Now, there's a couple of choices. On my coolers, because I want them to have a more finished look, I not only take these handles off, I cut right along this rim, so it's a continuous same size all the way around, and that way my insert is smooth. So, completely optional, you do not have to do that. There's lots of ways you can cut it off. I'm gonna use multi-tool. If you don't have a multi-tool, it's fine. You can use something as simple as a hacksaw with a fine tooth blade in it, or you could use a sharp pocket knife. So let's not get all worked up about what tools we need to cut some thin plastic, because it's not complicated. I'm gonna cut it off. And then also, because I've made so many of these for this same cooler, I made a template to where I can just center this on the board and draw the line. I'm not gonna worry about having to draw my pencil line around this because I've done that a million times. So I'm gonna use that template to trace it out. Again, you don't have to have that. You can just take your pencil, draw around it. And to be honest, if you want it to be super simple, you don't have to do this step at all. You can make your frame just a little bit wider, a little bit deeper, just to fit the cooler in the way that it is and just have square corners. Perfectly fine, okay? Perfectly fine. Do it however you want, as easy as you want. That's why we're, sh that's why we, we as in me, are showing you all the different options that you can do this so you can kind of personalize it your way. Be ready to probably have to do a little sanding, a little filing, a little trimming to get everything to work right. And not necessarily that it has to fit perfect because each one of these coolers, even though they're the same, they are molded slightly different, but I just try to get a nice tight fit and I'm gonna have some decorative edges around here anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. There's of course no rhyme or reason how we round these over, do it however you want, chew on it for all I care. I'm gonna use this little cup and we can jigsaw, bandsaw. Ta-da, all round. All right, so now we're getting into part of the plumbing portion. Everybody needs some good clean pipes. The best way to drain these, this is a marine boat hull, dr hull drain that they put in like coolers and fish uh, holders and stuff on boats and whatnot. It works really great. So what we need is to drill a hole. We can use, of course, multiple different things. Step bit, hole saw, 
However, we need to drill the hole. I like to drill a little pilot hole first all the way through. So then I know that this little spot right here on the bottom is where I need to drill my bigger hole. We know that we put our hole nice, tight fit. Once we put a little silicone on there, put that on there, tighten that down. She is sealed and ready to go. So I'm gonna switch this to a 90 degree elbow because I like the way that it fits this frame better. It's the same thing. Oh, like I said, I have a link in the description, but this is just going to fit down there and turn. It makes the plumbing a little bit easier to go out to our drain. Silicone around there. So now on the back, we could put just a little bit more silicone. Slide this around there. Then as soon as it's tightened down, we are good. We gotta add two more pieces to the frame. Our hose spigot obviously goes it into the side of the frame here. Well, the bottom of the cooler is obviously gonna sit down here if we don't prop it up. So if we set that there, put that cooler there, the drain would have to go uphill and three and a half inches is how much we need to prop this up. So I just use a couple of chunks of two by four. You can use anything, but I just set them on end. I'll screw them in from the bottom. I just kind of center them so that they fit in between the ribs on the cooler. Again, this particular cooler, and then also space them out enough to where it doesn't bother our plumbing. So a couple screws in there. These will never see any moisture down on top of them, so I'm not worried if they're treated by anything. A couple screws, then we can get on. Now we're going to move on to working on the lid. The lid, 25 and a half by 15 and three quarters, is comprised of the front and the back and the sides. And then however you want to cover the top, I usually just keep it simple, stupid, and use the same one by fours that I use for everything else and just line them up on there. And then we go back and decorate them how we want to. Now for the top, I'm gonna to save you the pleasure of watching me drill more pocket holes, but that's all we're gonna to do to assemble the frame of this lid cover. Just in the ends, two pocket holes in each one. Glue and screw, cover. Move it along. So now that this glued and assembled, all we have to do is cover this, 15 and three quarter boards, however many you wanna put on there, whatever the arrangement, doesn't matter. We just gotta get this covered up glued, make sure it's square, and yeah. I know what you're thinking. Why is he gluing these down? These boards are gonna expand and contract and the whole thing's gonna explode. It's going to be okay. I've done a lot of them this way. It's gonna hold just fine because it's just a wooden cooler and we're not too worried about it. You can use concrete, cover it in Legos. I don't give a shit what you cover it with. You can cover it in anything. That is not the important part. What the important part is, and I've said important part a lot, but one of the really important parts is the next step, and that is fitting the cooler and insulating it. That's the part we have to worry about. This is just the look cool part. Now is your time that you can go crazy with the creativity here. You can really use all kinds of different stuff. I've used cedar fence pickets, even weather treated, just regular fence pickets, corrugated metal, any kind of vintage barn wood or junk that you find in the trash. Use whatever you want to use to cover this stuff because it all works great. We're starting our creative portion with a little bit of burnt wood and these little torches are going to take forever Oh, there's the big torch. I found it. <laughs> it's important when you burn wood, if you want it to stay looking like that, you do need to seal it. And especially as burn up as I had this sucker. So I used the same Halcyon Total Boat finish here, watered down just a little bit so that I could get this to really soak down into that grain and kind of lock that char on there. So I give it a good coat of the thinned out and then I give it another coat 
just a little bit thicker. And then we kind of moved into adding the colors one at a time. Another great tip for outdoor furniture, and especially these coolers, any wood that's gonna contact the ground on a regular basis outside, make a little dam with some tape around your legs, mix up some epoxy and let it soak down into these legs. It'll soak in a lot of it, and you just kind of keep adding it a little bit at a time until the epoxy starts to set. And then once that stuff is hardened, these legs are damn near weatherproof on the bottom. It's a great way to extend anything that's going to go outdoors, and it's super easy. So another thing to also note on this, I did water this down much more than Total Boat recommends like quite a bit more, probably 25% water. The reason for that was because I wanted this to really flow out and not get stuck on any of the ridges or anything because I want all the pigment to soak down into the grain, like get it down in there. And I'm hoping adding the water helps with that. We're going to let it completely dry overnight and then cover it per Total Boat's recommendations for a final coat to protect it. But to get the color in there, we're gonna try this. Okay, yeah, that is pink. So I'm sitting here, as one does, trying to decide if I wanted a bubblegum pink cooler. Turns out I don't. Let's do all the colors, right? Orange, green, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent red, blue. This is gonna make it take way longer because obviously I can't just mix all those together. Then we would just have a brown cooler and if we was going to do that maybe we should have just stuck with the wood and that would have been much easier but no we are going to use each color i'm gonna to have to mix up a small batch of each color apply it where i want to it's going to have to dry 75 percent of the way and then we mix up a batch of another color put it where we want have to dry a little bit uh yeah so it's going to take a lot longer i think it's going to turn out pretty cool if it does not there's gonna be some sanding in my future. So let's give it a try. And very quickly after giving it a try, I found out that those colors are just not gonna be as bright as I wanted them to be. So my next thought was, hey, I will whitewash the whole thing and then put the colors back on top of it and they'll be way brighter, right? I mean, that's how it's supposed to work. Colors on top of the white, kind of like a primer, yeah. Well, it sort of worked, but we had to go back and forth a couple of times trying it different ways. So we whitewashed it, colored it, whitewashed it again, colored it. I don't know how many times we went back and forth. And then we kind of got this cool effect going on here, which eh, it was okay. I like this kind of gradient effect. It's fancy, so fancy. So fancy, in fact, that I immediately decided to cover back up with more color because I didn't like the faded out color look. So we put the colors on top again for I think the third, maybe fourth time. This thing's going to be sealed up pretty good when we're done. But I was really liking the color that we got this time around, so I was going to stick with it. I just wanted to kind of give it that finishing touch with something extra, and I didn't know what it was. So I said, hey, let's put some black stripes in between the colors. That'll be great, right? And then freaking immediately, when I put this on here, I was like, oh God, that looks like crap. Looks like crap, but there was no turning back from this. So what do you do? You burn it again. And I mean, really burn it. And this is where I got the look that I was really going for. And I really thought that it looked amazing after we did this step. The easiest and quickest way that I've found to attach the top plate is with your friendly pocket hole jig. It's super fast, it makes hidden fasteners, and you can use the weatherproof screws and all's good. Pocket holes drilled, check. Now it's time to attach the top. And all we're looking for here is to try to get it about centered. Again, not crucial. We know that the cooler is gonna fit tightly inside this rim, so as long as there's clearance all the way around, we are good. Well, shit. You keen eyed folks might have noticed that I just put all those screws in there and this thing is backwards. Come on. So we want to drill this basically as low as we can in the frame, but still to be able to be solid into the frame. The reason we don't want to put it way up here is 
the cooler can't drain uphill. I'm going to put this in the middle. I'm going to eye it so the bottom of this spigot is it eh, roughly the bottom of the frame, I think, is probably where I'll go with it. I'm going to put a couple of dots there, be approximately where I want it to be. Careful with that. The time has come to insert the cooler. Top mounted cooler. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. So you can lower the sports if you'd rather this to be flush with the top. I raise it up for the simple reason of, I just don't want the lid to interfere with the lip here. So you can do it if you want to, don't have to. Doesn't matter to me, you're cooler. The lid and the cooler itself have to be completely separated. We still want it to seal and close correctly, but we do not want it to hinge off of these points. So we just need to cut these little nibs off. Now, Now, my friends, it's the fun part. And by fun, I mean you like ridiculously sticky, stick to everything, disgusting insulation foam. That if you get it on you, it does not come off very easily. The more you use, obviously, the better insulated it's gonna be. Some of you might be asking, does that even do anything? Well, I've tested it, it does, it does help. Now, am I some sort of scientist in thermal insulation? No. No, you are absolutely not a scientist in anything, but if you take this slow, do one can at a time and get this foam really worked down in there, you're gonna get great results every time. So for this cooler, two cans of foam got us all the way to the bottom, but I wanted to stop and go ahead and do the plumbing and I wanted to just give a brief explanation of how we're working this. You don't have to use this nylon reinforced hose. You could use a scrap of garden hose, anything to drain the water out of here. We just got two cheapo, like inch and a half or so hose clamps here. You tighten one end, get the hose finagled in onto the end of your hose spigot pipe there and put the other hose clamp on and you're done. Now, saying that, I did struggle a little bit on this one because this hose is reinforced and it's pretty thick. And if you don't heat it up, it can be kind of hard to bend, but it does work great and I've used it a lot. It lasts a long time, but it's not your only choice. And speaking of more choices, I decided to use a third can of foam here. As you can see, you of course don't have to use a third can. You can use a fifth can. You can use two cans, one can, however many cans that you want. It's totally up to you. You do want to be sure for our thermal barrier. Again, completely optional. You do not have to use a thermal barrier, but it needs to be adhered to the lid somehow. We can glue it. We can use double stick tape, which is what I'm using. It just needs to be stuck down well for the next step of mounting the lid. I will say it's very satisfying when you peel this liner off there the first time. Oh, I say that, then it took me two tries. Fail. This plastic is fantastic for things not sticking to it. You cannot use, I don't think, pretty much any glue, unless it's specifically for this type of plastic, will not stick to it. Construction adhesive won't stick to it. Epoxy won't stick to it. Nothing sticks to it very well. So typically what I would do when I didn't put the thermal bear and just have the wood, I would put construction adhesive in there because it does hold good enough just to where I can get the lid lifted up and get it permanently attached. That's maybe not gonna be the case with this thermal burial. Why do I keep saying burial? Idiot. Barrier. So I'm gonna try spray adhesive just to see if it'll work. If it doesn't, it won't be that big a deal. We can try something else. But I'm gonna douse this on there. Now, because this is not attached to the cooler and this fits pretty tight left and right, when we put this down on there, that's it. Smash her home. 
Okay, so now that this is semi-dry, we wanna carefully take this off here. You can do this step after you mount the hinge or before you mount the hinge. Doesn't really matter as long as the lid is dried to the top here. So we wanna carefully pull this off like that. You can see now that's stuck on there, which is what we want. Now I'll bring you in a little closer. Now this is what we're gonna to want to mount this lid. We need some screws that are no thicker than the top of the lid so that they don't poke through. I'm gonna use three quarter. And you want pan head screws that don't countersink at all, but just have the flat head. I'm using these like drawer front screws. They have a pretty big kind of like washer type head on them. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna mount this in four places. And we use these little indentions in this cooler. You drill a hole in each one that the head of this screw can fit through. You see where I'm going here. You've put the screw down through this layer and to the second layer and then screw it in and then we'll put caps on these. So now I take my driver, hold the screw as centered in that hole as I can, about like that. Push it down through there. There's lots of different so another optional step, but I, I think it really gives a professional looking touch to the lid here. You don't have to cover these holes where we drilled to mount it on there. You can simply leave them open. I like to use just some little plastic covers to cover the holes. You could use automotive panel fasteners and clip the bottoms just so they cover the holes. Just take a little bit of silicone, smear it on there, smush the caps on there, clean the silicone off with a little bit of mineral spirits if you're messy like I am, and that's really all it takes. And now for just a few finishing touches. If you have all the coats of finish that you want on here, we can put on our hinges, which I use just simple door hinges on the back. And then we need to attach our lid. The lid does stop from the wood contacting the top plate at the back. I still like to reuse the plastic strap though, just to give it some double reinforcement. You do have to redrill the hole just to lower the strap just a bit. I like to make it to where it meets just at the same point that the lid contacts the top. Then you can choose any handle that you want to use. A simple gate handle works really well and they're very cheap. I just happen to have this aluminum Ikea handle that I painted black and that's it. We're done.